93.3 FM. The views expressed on the following program do not necessarily reflect the views of Money Radio staff, management, or advertisers, and do not represent an offer to buy or sell any securities. Some interviews heard on this program may be sponsored by the participants. It's time for Health Futures with Cypress Home Care Solutions, Bob Roth. This is Arizona's only show dedicated to providing you with expert advice on how to live a longer, healthier, and happier life. To learn more, call 602-264-8009. That's 602-264-8009. Now, here's your host, Bob Roth. Good afternoon. My name is Bob Roth. I'm your host of Health Futures Taking Stock in You. If you're just tuning in, we're a weekly show that's found right here on Money Radio, 1510 AM, 99.3 FM, and the World Wide Web at MoneyRadio1510.com. And our name is exactly what our show is about. It's Health Futures, and Health Futures is about how our older adult population can live a healthier, happier life. And I have the pleasure of bringing this content to our listening audience for now three and a half years. And what makes our show special is we bring outstanding guests to the show. And today is no different. I've got great guests on the show. And I encourage you, if you've not been out to our website at cypresshomecare.com, go to the radio button, click on the radio button. You'll hear about 120 other shows that we have been bringing to you for the last three and a half years. And we've brought, you know, research scientists, we've brought doctors in, we brought in social workers, financial planners, mobile dentistries. Uh, we, we've brought in just about anything as it relates to how our older adult population can live a healthier, happier life. And today, like I said, is no different. Uh, we're coming at you live from this guest oil park. It's uh, July 22nd, 2016, and it's really hot and humid here in Scottsdale and throughout Arizona. And, you know, I saw the map and it's really hot throughout the country and I know the Midwest is uh, really uh, getting a little taste of what we deal with a lot. Um, I've got sitting in on the studio and I want to just introduce our guests in the studio. They're listening in today and uh, they may chime in every once in a while but I've got uh, a dentist here to my right, Dr. Jim Kelly. Welcome to the show. Well, it's good to be here. It's good to have you here, and I've got his wife, Sherry, here joining us, and I've got Barry Kluger, and Barry Kluger has a PR agency. It's Kluger Ship Public Relations, right? That's right. Always a pleasure to see you. Always a pleasure. And 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 for our listening audience that doesn't know this, he's kind of famous. Uh, You know, he uh, used to be uh, Mr. MTV and some other things, too. We might talk about that a little bit later. But this day, today, specifically this show, I want to talk about aging in place. And I brought to our listening audience an expert. And he's from the East Coast. He's on the phone right now with us. And his name is Louis Tannenbaum. And he is the nation's leading authority on aging in place. He has years of experience in helping individual families, builders, developers, and communities to set the stage for folks to remain safe and comfortable in their own home. And I talk about this a lot. Nine out of ten people want to age in place. And if they can, why not? Lewis, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me, Bob. It's great to have you, too. And, uh, Lewis, you know, aging in place is not something that's really new, but it's really starting to uh, get a lot of notoriety because we've got a lot of people aging rather quickly. Uh, us baby boomers, uh, and I, I kind of catch the, the tail end of that baby boom, uh, we're, we're turning 65 at a clip of 10,000 a day. So talk to me and talk to our listening audience about how you got into this uh, whole aging in place thing. Well, I'm, uh, I started as a carpenter. When I finished college, I wanted to build my own solar house, and I got a job on a construction site. And quite a few years later, I was working as a contractor in the D.C. metro area when I got a call about a young man who – was 12 years old, coming out of rehab, paraplegic from a gunshot accident. His mother um, got a hold of me, and I said, what do you need a carpenter for? And she said something very important still today. She said, 
I want him to be independent. I didn't have to help him in the bathroom before he was injured. I don't want to help him in the bathroom when he comes home. And this was 1988, so quite a while ago, almost 30 years now. Um, there was no Internet. It was hard to find out what to do, but I did change their bathroom, and he was independent. And I saw the importance and significance of that on this family, of him not needing help, not being a burden, not being special. And I wanted uh, to – I enjoyed that and wanted to repeat that experience. A few years ago, I, a few years later, I read an article about the age wave and decided that this was my opportunity to have that good feeling again while working as a carpenter and helping people to age in place. The, the word wasn't even known then, aging in place, but I decided to focus my design build remodeling business on that segment of the market. And you know, timing's everything, and, and certainly you were ahead of the curve, and you've learned a lot since the 80s, and, and uh, I think that uh, the community in itself is learning as we go. And you and I had a conversation prior to our show here today. Um, it's kind of scary. Um, I don't think we're really quite ready for the tsunami that's about to hit us. I, I agree with you. Um, and, and one of the things that does make it easier, you know, we don't go to have private conversations in bowling alleys. It's too loud. You have to kind of have the right place. And hospitals, nursing homes, assisted living, continuing care retirement communities might be the right place because they're designed to be those places. But our homes were frankly designed before we had so much longevity. I mean, it's a recent phenomenon that people get as old as they do. And the homes weren't really designed for people who have trouble walking and have eye difficulties and so forth. And if we transform a lot of these homes, will have a better place, a happier place, and a more economical place for people to get the care they need and be safe and uh, be less burdensome to their families. You know, it's, it's interesting. We've got a lot of older adults that are, have been living in the same place for 30, 40, 50 years. And, you know, they, right. know, they know exactly where the bathroom is. They, they know where the kitchen is. Uh, you know, even as they develop some age-related illnesses or – um, degenerations like macular degeneration and stuff like that, they still know where everything is. And and I think what I hear you saying is you can stay home, but just need to just modify it so it can fit your needs. And, you know, you may need a, you know, you may be in a chair or a scooter, so you might need a ramp at the front door. You might need some grab bars in the bathroom. But those modifications, don't they're not that costly. They just need to be made so that person can age successfully in place. That's what I'm hearing you say. That's exactly it. Um, and, it and it's not even uh, about that individual necessarily. It's really about our housing stock. So if you think about, you know, you mentioned the, the, the millennials, and we used to be called the pig and the, I mean, not the millennials, the boomers. We used to be referred to as the pig and the python because we were such a bulge in the demographic. But now it looks like the millennials are as large a population. So it really has shifted my focus to, instead of thinking about the individual, I'm just thinking about our housing. You know, we add runways on the airport when we get bigger planes or to accommodate more travel. We add uh, lanes on the freeway when there's more traffic. We just need to update our houses so they're really prepared for this coming and continuing population of people who are older. And if we can get people so that they're injured fewer times in their home, you know, the cost of falls is $34 billion a year in this country. And if we can get people home from rehab more quickly because they can get in the door and get safely to the bathroom, then it costs less for them to be in rehab. And they're happier. Everyone is happier home rather than in a facility. And it makes it safer for family members and paid caregivers to work with people if the home is a good site for those things. I agreed on all fronts. And, you know, with the American Disabilities Act did in the public sector, we're looking, and I hear what you're saying, we're looking to do that in the home sector. Make those modifications exactly. so that people can age successfully in place. Lewis, I don't know if you hear the music. We certainly hear it here. So that's our cue from our engineer, James, that we're going out of our first segment. Remember I told you these segments go real fast. You're listening to Health Futures Taking Stock and You. I'm your host, Bob Roth. I've got Louis Tenenbaum on the air. 
We'll be right back. High returns on your investments? Who wouldn't want that? This is Sinclair No, with a strategy that could increase your overall return on your investment portfolio. It's called Decadian. The Decadian investment methodology encompasses a 10-year goal for financial freedom, plus something that's really missing today, straight talk, so you know you have a financial advisor you can trust. Great investment recommendations that far exceed what your institutional markets offer. All this wrapped with performance guarantees. Only those who know what they can do will guarantee what they can do. Decadian. Decadian Decadian.com. D-E-C-A-D-I-A-N. That's Decadian.com. Call 844-332-2342. 844-332-2342. Here for you when you need it most. Decadian. Any Joe Schmo knows Geico will work to save you money on car insurance. But since money talks, why not just ask the savings? That's me, Joe Savings. I'm not literally a million bucks, but I feel like it. Why? Because when Joe switched his car insurance at Geico.com, his monthly rate went down and the savings went up. Now he uses the handy Geico mobile app anytime to check out his policy perks. Talk about a win-win and two thumbs up. Man, I wish I had thumbs. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Want to learn the big lies and absolute truth about the precious metals markets? Join Nick Grovich, founder of American Federal Rare Coin and Bullion, a nationally recognized expert and numismatist, every Tuesday afternoon at 4.20 p.m. during the Financial Review on Money Radio. Learn the truth that no coin dealer wants you to know. For more info, visit the website AmericanFederal.com. That's AmericanFederal.com. Here Maps, the free app that helps you beat the jam with live traffic info and public transit schedules. Get it now at here.com slash commute. Now back to Health Futures, taking stock in you. If you have questions about your own or your loved one's future health care, call 602-264-8009. Now, here's your host, Cypress Home Care Solutions, Bob Roth. You know, it wouldn't be a show without giving a shout-out to the great Gary Marshall. Uh, He passed away this week uh, at 81 years old, and this guy was a legend. Um, The the work that he did is going to be forever memorialized in the movies and in the sitcoms he did. And when sitcoms started to fall off and they weren't as popular anymore, he went to the movie route. And did movies like Pretty Women, Woman, and he did Princess Diaries. Uh, guy was incredible and uh, lived large and uh, really is a, uh, he's an older adult and left a, a great imprint on our baby boom generation and other generations to follow. So shout out to Gary Marshall. We're going to miss you. Uh, Odd Couple, Happy Days, Laverne and Shirley, Mork and Mindy. Uh, Flamingo Kid, Beaches, I mean, the, the, the list goes on and on and on. Um, July 19th, he passed away at the age of 81. So back to you, Lewis. Uh, I wanted to give a tribute to Gary Marshall. I want to talk about aging in place. And, you know, when we look here in Arizona, we have a really, really high concentration of older adults. And it's really scary, and I've given the statistic, if you just look at our demographics, uh, we – by the time 2030 rolls around and 2050 rolls around, we're going to have less and less people young enough to care for our older adult population. To give you an idea, just based on census, those people caring for an individual 80 or older, and I'm just talking about census data, not paid caregivers, anybody available to care for someone that's 45 to 64. You know, Presently, we have about seven people for every person that's over 80. By 2030, nationally, we're going to have 4.1 
here in Arizona, we're going to have 2.6. By 2050, we're going to have 2.9. And here in Arizona, we're going to have less than 2, 1.8. So I, I think they're starting to address it here. And I wanted to share with you, Lewis, I have a uh, operation, director of operations of my company who is shopping for homes. And she told me some of the homeowners or some of the home builders are making modifications or, or introducing new styles or new setups to accommodate maybe an older adult moving in and having like an efficiency inside the home that has a kitchenette and has a bathroom and and has a living area uh, so it's all self secluded from the rest of the home are you seeing that back east um i'm i'm not sure we we are seeing you know home styles do change and i'm impressed to hear the builders are doing that out that way there's also an idea called universal design which um says that things that are built and designed products and buildings should be good for everybody instead of just for the narrow and continually smaller percentage of the population that's upright and ambulatory and strong and and with good eyesight there is some universal design already in our world for example curb cuts at the corner you know, it's great for somebody who is rolling down the street, right. but it's also good if you've got a suitcase and it's good if you're on a uh, skateboard. And the other one that everybody knows is closed captioning. So closed captioning was originally required to include people with hearing difficulties in using the television. But we all use it at the bar, at the waiting area in the airport, all kinds of places that we read the screen. So what, what you're talking about is making accommodations or making adjustments to design ideas that include people end up having a net benefit for everybody. You know, I, I will tell you that, uh, truth be told, I have closed captioning up on my television because there's some times where I don't hear you know, mm. what, what is being said. Uh, Lewis, it's Barry. I have a uh, probably more of a statement than a question. I think one of the interesting things that you're dealing with, not only people who are younger but aging in place, is the boomers are a generation that understands technology. We grew up with technology. We grew up with the computers. We also grew up with uh, black and white TV. So in these new homes, designing things that have to do with computers, touch pads, all of those things, we're a generation that the previous generation uh, did not grow up with. They grew up with uh, Selectric typewriters, not keyboards. Right. Uh, that's a good point. And, and so many of the technologies are really almost background to our lives now, uh, particularly with aging and health. You know, if you don't want to make a trip down to the doctor to get your blood pressure taken, you can have a cuff attached to your computer and take it at home. Similarly, there's a lot of monitoring out there that keeps track of what a person's doing. And when changes, anomalies start to show up in your behavior or your activity, it's time to wonder what's going on. So let's say I'm here in Maryland and my mom's out there in Scottsdale, as my mom was for many years before she passed away. And let's say she gets up, you know, between 7 and 8 every day, almost all the time, and all of a sudden she's sleeping until 9.30 or 10 o'clock. This program could alert me that mom has slept in, and I call mom. If she answers the phone, you know, she says I was up in her day watching Johnny Carson, now maybe watching Colbert, and um, so I slept in. But maybe she doesn't answer the phone, and that anomaly in her behavior that's monitored with technology triggers me to call the neighbor and see what's going on with mom if she doesn't answer the phone. So I think technology is going to be a big piece of all of this for our lives. You know, Lewis, uh, I, I want to give uh, uh, your website out to our listening audience. Uh, Lewis Tenenbaum, T-E-N-E-N-B-A-U-M.com. And that's Lewis, L-O-U-I-S. You've got – this thing is really rich, full of content, and you wrote a piece, as, as we're talking about this, I was looking at it. You wrote a piece back in April, and that was, how is aging in place like Tesla? And I think that's what we're talking about, right? Technology? Yeah, the Tesla one was a little different. Um, the, the one 
There was one route around there called How Is Aging in Place Like Uber, which may be more what I'm talking about okay. now. Um, because aging in place is like Uber. Be- so Uber uses excess capacity. Airbnb the same way. There's excess capacity, and through the, you know, the technology, we're able to identify that technology and match up excess people people with excess and people who need that excess and become more efficient in the use of that capacity. So aging in place is kind of like that. The way aging in place is like Tesla is a little different to my mind. It's because Tesla and solar collectors are spurred by policy. You know, when you buy a Tesla, you pay $80,000 for the car, but you get a $7,500 credit on your taxes. So we're talking about fixing up homes here and making it easier for people to age in place and for families to care for families. What if we had tax credits that made it cheaper to remodel your home the right way, the age-friendly way, than the regular way? Just as Tesla, through policy, is uh, you know, a little cheaper to buy a Tesla than maybe a Jaguar or some other car of that, that price point. But the idea of policy being behind so much of where our country decides to go as a group and then adjust the funding of things in order that we go there. You know, it's interesting. Uh, we just came off the Republican National Convention. Yeah. And, and many of us were you know, listening last night to hear what the nominee for the Republican Party was talking about. And, you know, being in the... Uh, the older adult world that both of us are in, um, I didn't hear anything about older adults. Did you? No, no. Uh, um, there was only one mention so far in the campaign uh, by Bernie Sanders, actually, when he said something like uh, aging in place should be a right. Um, and, and it should be a right. But the thing is, it's also what most people want, as you said, right. you know, 90% or 88%, but it's also starting to show that it's the most economical. You, so it's what people want, it's what families want, it's economical. Heck, let's go there. Well, you know what's interesting is that um, I serve, and I know I shared this with the listening audience, on the board for the National Association of Home Care and Hospice, which is right there in your backyard at Washington, D.C., we represent 36,000 home health, home care, and hospice companies throughout the country. And our leader, Val Halimbaderos, who's the president, who has been the president for about 33, 34 years, says the last Civil Rights Act is older adults. And, mm. and, and I think that's so apropos. And I mean, I know that we're dealing with a lot of turmoil in a lot of the inner cities right now, but really... The last Civil Rights Act, because of this movement that we've got going on, and I'm talking about 10,000 people a day turning 65, um, we really, and and I'm looking forward to the convention next week to see if Hillary talks about our older adult population and what she has in store for them. I know she's talked about bringing Medicaid down to 55. Personally, I don't see how that's going to work. I think that's going to bankrupt the system. Um, we can talk a little bit more about that uh, when we come back on our third segment. But uh, I, I want to hear what her plans are for our older adult population and how they can, like our show Monica reads, how they can live a happier, healthier life. I do want to leave with one thing. Uh, you talked about the Uberization, uh, how aging is like Uber. Uh, there was an Aging 2.0 conference here, uh, Silver Nest. I'm going to talk a little bit more about them when I get back. We got to take a break. You listen to Health Futures. As we reach the bottom of the hour, we pause for a look at the world's news. Then we're back with Money Talk. We're Money Radio 1510 and 99.3 FM. Special report shooting in Germany. Police in Munich, Germany say terrorism is suspected in a shooting spree today and that up to three gunmen are still on the loose. Correspondent Will Ripley. There is still a, a clear and present danger for people who are in Munich, which is why the police have, have told people that they need to uh, stay inside their homes or, or offices or any safe place away from public areas. A police spokesman says at least five people are dead following today's Munich shooting spree. President Obama says the U.S. is reaching out to Germany. We don't yet know exactly what's happening there, but... Uh, obviously, our hearts go out to those uh, who may have been injured. Uh, it's still an active situation, and uh, Germany is one of our closest allies, uh, so we are going to pledge all the support that they may need 
uh, in dealing with these circumstances. Munich City transportation system, including trains and buses, has been shut down. I'm Ann Cates. At Walgreens, getting diabetes testing supplies with Medicare Part B is a walk in the park. Really, because getting what you need is quick and easy, giving you more time for other things. There's zero dollars out of pocket on all major brands like OneTouch and Walgreens True Metrics, and no extra paperwork. So managing diabetes becomes a stroll down Easy Street, or a trip to the movies, or even a day at the beach. Talk to your pharmacist today. Walgreens at the corner of Happy and Healthy. Zero out of pocket cost when billed to Medicare and full coverage supplemental insurance. ADT presents what to consider when considering home security. An ADT sign is more than a sign. It's a line in the sand. On one side, your family. On the other, an uncertain world. For over 140 years, more people have chosen ADT to help prevent crime than anyone else. Get ADT starting at just $28.99 a month. Tested, trusted, proven ADT. With 36-month contract for licensing and terms and conditions, visit ADT.com. When the sun goes down, Money Radio heats up with Gary Coldbaum, Clark Howard, and the Schnitt Show. Listen to Money Radio on 99.3 FM, where you can hear us all day, every day. Hi, I'm Gary Kolb. I'm host of the nationally syndicated radio show, Investor's Edge. We're not just handsome radio people. We manage investors' money for a living, specializing in fee-based discretionary money management. No big commissions, just a fee on the assets that's managed. We also provide a full range of personalized services, including retirement planning, insurance, fixed income, and educational needs, all to assist you in achieving your financial goals. Understanding not all individuals have the same needs, we will carefully evaluate your personal goals to determine a proper investment strategy. If your current approach to investing is not getting you where you would like to be, call us to make an appointment for a complimentary portfolio review. The number to call, 888-422-5559. That's 888-422-5559. That's 888-422-5559. Ever notice that the last three letters in American spell can? Maybe that's why we want to say we can shop online, we can use free Wi-Fi, and we can give our social security number and other personal information to our bank if we want to. But the fact that we can do all of those things exposes personal information that can lead to identity theft. At LifeLock, we believe you have the right to be free to do everything you do every day. So we use proprietary technology to detect and alert you to a huge variety of identity threats. And we have a U.S.-based team who will work to resolve issues if your identity ever is stolen. No one can prevent all identity theft or monitor all transactions at all businesses. But with LifeLock, you can live with more peace of mind. Membership starts at $9.99 a month plus applicable taxes. And if you become a LifeLock member now, you can get 10% off. Go to LifeLock.com and enter promo code NEWS. LifeLock. Hear maps. Hit the open road with free offline turn-by-turn -turn guidance that works anywhere. Get it for your phone at here.com slash offline. I'm Bruce Vale with your money now. European Union officials have approved a new variety of biotech soybeans developed by Monsanto. The ruling removes uncertainty for Monsanto, which had already sold the seeds to farmers this year, and for grain companies, some of which had refused to purchase the soybeans from farmers without approval from the EU to import the crop once it had been grown. The seeds were genetically modified to resist a more powerful combination of herbicides. Monsanto's shares are down a fraction. Shares of Boston beer are up 16 percent. The maker of Sam Adams Lager warned it would cut costs to adjust to lower volume. The company's quarterly results were better than expected. The broader market remains higher. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is up 40 points. At 18,557, the NASDAQ Composite is ahead 25 points, while the S&P 500 is up 8 points. That's your money now. You're a small to mid-sized business with 300 to 3,000 employees. You face the same network security challenges as big businesses do, but can't support a big IT investment, leaving your doors open to advanced cyber threats. Barracuda Next Generation Firewalls provide all the core features of enterprise firewalls and UTMs, but without hidden costs and deployment hurdles, making owning a big business firewall no big deal for your SMB. 
Reclaim your network. Try a Barracuda Next Gen Firewall risk-free at barracuda.com slash firewalls. A great business needs a stunning website. And with Wix.com, you can do it all by yourself. Wix.com makes it easy to look amazing online, no matter what type of business you're in. Show off your images in a beautiful gallery. Grow your contact list and get all your social media in one place, just the way you want. Your customers are going to love it. So, what are you waiting for? Show the world what you can do. Go to Wix.com and create your stunning website today. It's easy and free. Now, back to Health Futures. Taking stock in you. If you have questions about your own or your loved one's future health care, call 602-264-8009. Now, here's your host, Cypress Home Care Solutions, Bob Roth. Welcome back. You're listening to Health Futures. I'm your host, Bob Roth, and I have got Louis Tannenbaum on the phone. We're talking about aging in place, and, you know, I, I usually – am able to get us out of a segment pretty good, and I really cut it close there. And my engineer, James, uh, worked some magic, and we got out just successfully. But I do want to say that I left off talking about technology. And, you know, I was referring to your article that is up on your page, Lewis, uh, How is Aging in Place Like Uber? And, Lewis, I know you're familiar with Aging 2.0, and you're familiar with the founders of the, the Aging 2.0, Stephen Johnson and and Katie Fike. And, you know, we've got this movement going on, and we've got a chapter here in Phoenix. And you talk about aging in place and senior living. Uh, our winner in our chapter, uh, the startup, was uh, a company called Silver Nest, and that's silvernest.com. Spelled just like it sounds, S-I-L-V-E-R-N-E-S-T. And basically, it's like a, it's a pre-matching service. So for us boomers that are empty nesters and we have these larger homes and don't want to downsize, but we would love to have somebody maybe occupy that space and maybe someone that might be an older adult, we could rent out that space and utilizing this silver nest. And it's a matching service, uh, pre-qualified matching, and they they uh, do background checks and they hold money back. I mean, it's really sophisticated and really cool because I can tell you here, Lewis, if you are going to give up your home and you're going to go into an independent living community or an assisted living community or a group home, you better be prepared to spend somewhere between $3,500 and $9,000 a month. And that is a lot of money, and a lot of people don't have that kind of money. And you talk about technology, and you talk about disruptive technology like Uber and like Airbnb, Airbnb that you described earlier. Silver Nest is doing the same thing, and, you know, you can probably find a decent spot. And I know there's one location here in Scottsdale for $900 a month. Good solutions I, are out I there. I agree. That's this is a really good example of, you know, the same thing, excess capacity being shared over technology that matches people up. And whether it is, you know, two older people getting together or two middle-aged people getting together or, you know, more up and down the ladder where um, an older person may rent out a room to a younger person who can then live in a nicer neighborhood or a shorter commute to work. and. And they get to be friends, they share issues and ideas across possibly generations, or the, the qualities that can come through this type of relationship are spectacular. Absolutely. Whether it's just caring about the person, saving money, economizing, becoming friends, we need much more of this type of thing. We do, we do. And uh, you and I talked prior to our show, uh, you know, we need to really think about what the future looks like. And, you know, I gave some statistics here in Arizona. Nationally, we have an aging demographic. You know, the one challenge we have here in Arizona is we have a sprawling market. You know, we don't have a high concentration like, you know, you're in Kensington, Maryland, so real close to Washington, D.C. I mean, D.C. Mm -hmm. is, is a, you know, compressed urban area where, you know, you can get from one potential older adult to the next in, you know, less than a football field. 
Um, so the tra- right. the travel time is not like it is here to get from the East Valley to the West Valley. Could take you an hour and a half. Yeah. And, and, yeah, I'm sure that you know when when we some of the models and experiments that are going on in aging in place concentrate on um, affordable housing buildings and communities where you are going from one room or one apartment to the next. But in the real world of the suburbs in you know the Southwest and and even in the suburbs out here in D.C. Uh, and largely in the Midwest as well, um, there are huge needs for that transportation between houses and how if if part of the idea will be as we move forward and recognize that people will be aging in place we're going to start to have more concentrations of people in an area in a neighborhood and i think that will probably be better for businesses like yours but it's also better for all kinds of businesses that maybe deliver food offer transportation and all kinds of things well, you know, an, another thing that we we talked about briefly, and, and you're seeing a lot more out east, and I'd love for you to touch a little bit on it, is these village villages. And, you mm-hmm. know, I, I think one of the first one was the Beacon, Beacon Hill Village in Boston, but you've got them sprouting up all over the place, especially in yeah. the Washington, D.C. area. Can you describe what that type of concept is all about? Right. The, the Beacon Hill Village model, which there's also something called the Village to Village Network, is growing all around the country and a little all over the world, but its highest concentration, actually, I think, is the D.C. metro area. And this is where a neighborhood, a subdivision, a town, a community, a neighborhood, get together, and the older people in the neighborhood themselves join the group. It's a, um, you know, one helping the other type thing. So whether it's you want resources, like I have a plumber that works well, or you need some help doing something in your home, maybe you need a ride, that's a big part of it. So one person is able to connect with another person in their neighborhood needs a ride, and maybe there's actually an exchange where the person who needs that ride is able to give some computer help or or something like that. But by people banding together, they're much stronger and much more comfortable continuing to age well in their community. In my area, Montgomery County, Maryland, we actually have a county position that is the village coordinator facilitator. And she is familiar with best practices, how to get a village started, what goes on in villages. And they have different focuses and different flavors and personalities because they're in different communities. But that facilitator helps get these things started because the county knows that when we take care of each other, we all benefit. Absolutely. And, and you know what's interesting is uh, the number, and, and we talked about this before, we, we've got nearly 29% of our older adult population that is 65 and older that is living home alone. Living home alone. And, you know, the concept of a village, the concept of Silver Nest, um, they, they, they're they going to have to continue to grow because, you know, I, I had a geriatrician here on my show a couple years ago and he made the comment one time that babies get touched over a hundred times a day, and as human beings, we crave that. We need that. We need uh, the hand holding, the hugs, the reassurance with the the arm around the shoulder. We have older adults that are home alone that don't get touched at all. A week, a couple weeks, or a month, and that's really really important. We've got to figure out a way where we can connect with these people, and that is either through villages or making our homes available to older adults where we can have planned meals and have lively discussions, uh, interacting. Uh, we we got to keep our brains going or otherwise they're going to turn to mush. I, I, I think you're right. I think the touch is an important part, and it's going to be balanced. You know, we already talked about technology by Skyping, by uh family connections and so forth through technologies as well. So I I think there are multiple ways, you know, ride to it. Can you get out to do something fun as well as just getting to the doctor because the ride isn't so expensive or difficult to organize when it comes from an agency rather than a neighbor. There's a whole lot of benefits. And this, you know, I'm not somebody who pines for the olden days, but there was a time when, 
people more often did things with and for each other, and I think it's it's coming back. You know, Lewis, it's funny what Bob said and what you said. People who moved into over 55 communities said, okay, I'm 55, I want to be with people within my age range, 55 to 65, and the thing is, once they become 75, they're now the oldest people in the community. They may be widows or widowers, and there's no one to look after them. I love the idea of the Beacon Village. You know, it's interesting. Uh, we're getting up on a break, and we keep talking about 65. And for some reason, there's this uh, misnomer out there that you have to retire at 65. And I've done a little research, and you know, just so that everybody knows, here in the studio, you, Lewis, and our listening audience, 65 actually emanated from a gentleman by the name of Otto von Bismarck in 1881. He was the conservative minister president of Prussia, and he presented this radical idea to the Reichstag government at saying that retirement was going to be at 65. You know, 65 is the new 35, right? I mean, you know, we don't feel like we're old. And our these baby boomers, us baby boomers, we're, we're reshaping the way we age. And we're talking about aging in place. I've got Lewis Tannenbaum on the air. Lewis, we're down three segments. we got one more. I want to talk a little bit more about aging in place and how our older adult population can successfully age in place. You're listening to Health Futures, taking stock in you. We will be right back. Hi, I'm David Goldstein, CEO of Arizona's premier collateral lender, Biltmore Loan. Today, I'm proud to announce the opening of our landmark location at 10830 North Scottsdale Road in Scottsdale, a block north of Shea. If you need cash, Biltmore can turn your significant assets into significant cash instantly. And while our office building is brand new, you'll find our way of doing business is strictly old-fashioned. You see, we not only offer you the best terms, we offer you the highest expertise and the best experience. We treat you with respect, and when we give you our word, you can take it to the bank. Because at Biltmore, we can buy or loan on almost anything you own, from jewelry, antiques, and fine art, to cars and real estate. So please go to BiltmoreLoan.com, that's BiltmoreLoan.com, or call 480-991-LOAN, that's 480-991-LOAN. At Biltmore, we say yes when the bank says no. If you're like most money radio listeners, you get a little busy sometimes, meaning you can't always hear your favorite shows. Now you can tune in anytime to one of the best retirement shows on the radio, Mastering Money, with wealth manager Steve Jurich and the doctor, Sinclair No. Heard weekdays at 8 a.m. live or at 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. or noon. It's really up to you. Download the Mastering Money app for your Apple or Android device or click on the podcast at MasteringMoneyRadio.com. See you there. Hi, this is Money Radio General Manager Ron Cohen, and I'm asking for your help. If there's a show you like, please contact the host and tell them. We've made it easy for you. Just go to MoneyRadio1510.com and click the banner that says Email the Host. Then pick the host you want to email and let them know what you think, good or even not so good. Believe me, they want to hear from you. From all of us here at Money Radio, thank you for your support over the past 27 years. Here Maps, the app that turns your phone into a car navigation system with offline maps and turn-by-turn guidance. Get it now at here.com slash guide. Now back to Health Futures. Taking stock in you. If you have questions about your own or your loved one's future health care, call 602-264-8009. Now, here's your host, Cypress Home Care Solutions, Bob Roth. Welcome back. You're listening to Health Futures. I'm your host, Bob Roth, and I've got Louis Tannenbaum on the air or on the phones, and we're talking about aging in place. And when we just left off of the last segment, I shared just a little tidbit about retirement age and how we as the baby boomers are really changing that. Uh, 65 used to be the time, and it goes back to 1881. Otto von Bismarck said that that was supposed to be the retirement age. Uh, We're living a lot longer. Uh, We have a lot more to give. And, 
you know, Lewis and you and I talked on the phone earlier and, you know, I, I really believe, and I've talked about it here on the show that, uh, you know, the future could really be, you know, multi-generational housing because we've got a lot of children that are growing up in these inner cities, these urban developments that really don't have moms and dads at home being able to assist them uh, with homework, teaching them really good value systems. And we know we've got people that are retiring that have a little bit more in their cup to give. I, I, I stand corrected, a lot more in their cup to give. I, I agree with you. Um, there's data out now that uh, older people, older citizens are voting, donating, and volunteering in record numbers. And this is really a, a vast pool of resource, of power, of energy that we can engage and employ to do all kinds of things, such as you know, multi-generation impacts, um, giving better to younger generations and helping them over the hump, but also you know, to ourselves. I mean, there's no reason why that population can't be a political force asking the legislators, whether locally or council people locally, to look at policies that allow people to age in place or age more economically, age better um, across the board through policy. You know, so, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And, and it's interesting because you used the Uber, Uber example because Uber got policy, right, in order to do what they could do. Well, Uber is working at policy. I think more interesting is Tesla, which, you know, really is about policy um, because they're taking advantage of so many different types of uh, credits and stuff. Uh, Tesla, uh, Elon Musk is also involved in the solar energy stuff where you see what happens when um, policy comes in incentivizing people to install solar collectors and an industry takes off like a rocket. So if we like homes to be remodeled, you know, it would train people to do the remodeling. It would update the homes for the coming population. And if we can incentivize that, we're going to save money in the long run. But the older population ourselves is in a position to be asking our legislators to take care of this for us. Absolutely. I, I, you, you bring up a great point, and you know, certainly I talked about earlier about the Republican convention coming to a close, and we got the Democratic convention kicking off on Monday. And I know us, you and I, and us that are very close to the older adult population trying to see if we can get policy or at least get interest on how we can afford our older adult population to live a healthier, happier life through you know, credits, through modification credits, through whatever policy that uh, we can get put in place. You know, it's interesting. I talked about the retirement age, and, you know, you look at the retirement age, uh, you know, at 65, you know, our, the presumptive nominee who will get the nomination for sure next week is uh, Hillary Clinton, and she's talking about, you know, reducing the Medicare eligibility down to 50 or 55, and I just don't see how the math is going to work with that one. Well, you know, it's really interesting that you mentioned that, because when you mentioned the Otto von Bismarck thing, and when you think about Social Security, which emerged in, I think, 37, and then Medicare in 67, I, I know those numbers aren't exactly right. The fact is, and there were so many fewer people who were eligible. And in, 19, in 1881, there were so few people eligible for this stipend, this retirement pension across the board at age 65. There were so few people because the life expectancy was only 47 at the change of the century in this country. It was a very easy giveaway to make this grand gesture. And even in the um, 30s when we did it across the board in this country, the numbers of people who were supporting the paying of Social Security was much larger than the number of people who were getting it. As the demographic shift due to continuing longevity, this sort of entitlement becomes a much greater cost for society to guarantee. Agreed. I, I totally agreed. And, you know, you really look back to 1881 or 1900, I think diarrhea was up there on number one or number two leading causes of death. I mean, right. we, we have come such a long way. You know, I, I, I know we're coming to 
close to a close. And, you know, I want to give you an opportunity to really talk about, you know, what you're doing to help move this ball forward. How are we, you know, really getting the word out there? Yes, policy is definitely, definitely something we need to institute, and we need to get our local governments and our federal government aware that this can, that we keep kicking down the road of aging, we need to get that up on the forefront. Um, what What are you doing going forward? Well, I'm looking at, at at all the stakeholders. So there's the younger family members, there are the older family members, but there's also the businesses and the manufacturers. So aging in place is, you know, people want to age in their home, and it means not having to move, particularly when you have a health event. It, you, you know, it's very easy to stay in your home when you're healthy, but when a health event happens, you start to need supporting services in the community, and a supportive household is, hap- is helpful. But it's also an opportunity for businesses like yours that are small and medium-sized and national ones, but also the manufacturers of the products that are used to get behind these ideas because it means good business, it means training, it means taxes, it means sales. How about if we went to Home Depot or Lowe's or Menards, and instead of there being an aisle of kind of icky-looking stuff that we call safety at home, how about if there was an aisle of good-looking stuff that says incentivize products to update your home? We're just changing the conversation completely. That's what I'm trying to do. Well, I, I got to tell you, we, you're you're doing it, and I want to make sure that our listening audience knows that website. It's lewistenenbaum.com, L-O-U-I-S-T-E-N-E-N-B-A-U-M. And if they needed to reach you, are, do you have a phone number that they can call you? Sure. They can call to 301-983-0131. And I have another new startup website called homesrenewed.org which you can go to, and that's where I'm trying to put the policy information to create a movement that says let's be responsible and take care of ourselves by working together. Love it. I I love what you're doing, and and Lewis, I I feel like we have so much more to talk about. So uh, come this fall, I'm going to reach out to you and bring you back on. Make it a great day. Have a great weekend. You've been listening to Health Futures. I'm your host, Bob Roth. Our guest today was Louis Tannenbaum. There's no place like home. You've been listening to Bob Roth's Health Futures. If you have questions about your own or your loved one's future health care, call Cypress Home Care Solutions at 602-264-8009. That's 602-264-8009. Or visit cypresshomecare.com. Be sure to join Health Futures with Bob Roth every Friday at noon, right here on Money Radio 1510 and 99.3 FM. Hey, Money Radio listeners, this is Gary Kaufbaum. Make sure you tune in for my show, Investor's Edge, heard daily at 6 p.m. You'll get my take on the markets and the world and what to look out for tomorrow. Investor's Edge is one of Money Radio's longest-running shows, so don't miss it. Listen daily at 6 p.m. on Money Radio 1510 a.m. or 99.3 FM. Money Radio 1510 and 99.3 FM. Is KFNN Mesa Phoenix? Check out the many ways to listen on the radio at 1510 AM or 99.3 FM or streaming on our website or with the Money Radio app on your smartphone. Wherever you go, we're with you. Right now, the uh, Dow is up 49 points, S&P 500 up 9, and the NASDAQ up 25. When people want to talk about money, this is the place they come to. And there's more on the way after this break for the latest news. And we begin 